previously on... Oh, that's right. This is just the exact same scene from last episode that was cut off right before I finished. I mean, it finished. So technically, I've already given this multiple sins, but new day, new sins. Also, immediately starting the show with moaning and screaming. So when myself and everyone sitting around me at Starbucks find out my headphones didn't engage because the jack is too full of pocket lint, my status as an upstanding member of society is immediately called into question. And to those of you out there sneering at the screen and calling me a Luddite for not having Bluetooth headphones, the battery in those died, so I was using the backup set of wired headphones with the accompanying dongle. It was the dongle. Dongle, damn it, the dongle failed me. I'm a good person. Take three steps up when I signal. No one on the other team hears them yelling this plan out loud. <laughs> Slip on shoes seem like a great idea till you find yourself in a life or death game of tug of war on a five story high platform. Breathing, breathing, breathing. Excitement? The commitment to these three shapes has made it all the way to the controls on these monitors. But why? I get the commitment to the whole theatricality of the game with regard to the contestants, but how does this help anyone behind the scenes? What's your name, huh? Why do you care about that? So I can use your name, duh. Number 240 would be the Squid Game Champion at TV Sins. Even after the dorm went all no holds barred in the last episode, establishing a severe lack of rules, not a single person takes the opportunity to push a few of their fellow competitors off the side of this OSHA violation masquerading as a walkway. Did you see that ball guy put his pants like a little baby? <laughs> Making fun of the people you just murdered. What exactly is the point of the bows on the coffins? I mean, I get it's to echo the gift box they each receive, but there's no one to appreciate that decorative decision. This just seems like wasted overhead. The success of this body harvesting scheme is somehow less believable than the death game going on upstairs. Never mind the absurd and ever-expanding number of people that have to be involved in this plot and all the infrastructure this process seems to require. The simple fact is it all hinges on this masked individual recognizing when this masked individual is looking at the camera and knowing for sure that they are THE masked individual who is in on the plan. Just think of the pileup that would occur at the bottom of this incinerator if another unwitting masked individual just happened to be staring in the general direction of the camera for a moment. He's not breathing. Go get that doctor. Making me believe for even one second that they're trying to help this person. From that movie, what's it called? Right? Matrix. Hey, when you got to Korea, is all you did watch movies? Giving someone a hard time for answering the question you literally just asked. Oh, about that, Grandma, why did you get kicked out? Grandma? Don't you ever call me that! More importantly, why did he call her that? They look to be about the same age. It could be an issue with the dubbing, so I'll just give two sins, just so we're covered. What can we do, huh? We've got three girls, an old man, and us. It's like the writers didn't remember this guy was there when his team won tug of war against all odds. We're all sinners, but we're still here, aren't we? The opening dialogue of every TV Sin staff meeting somehow makes its way into the episode. You're not worried at all? Those scumbags you got on your side over there? They people you trust? This is all it takes for Gihun to get under this asshole's skin? A few words about trust and he has him second guessing his loyalties? It's not like Gihun is a Jedi. Wait, is Gihun a Jedi? Cho thinks this slow-ass double tap would actually trigger an erase video footage combo. What's your reason for being... in here? The same as you. For money. Does this question even need to be asked? Isn't everyone here because they need money? So, in other words, Cho has time for this? Number 29. So you're finally here. The only thing allowing Junho to get away with this is an absurd desire to over techify everything. Why go with this flawed mask scanning when clearly a password, secret handshake, or a polite yet awkward butt cheek grab would have been more effective? Also, the scanning happens after they're already in the room when this is definitely a situation where you want to have your accomplices identified beforehand. Attempting to wake someone up by choking them. Looked like you were having a nightmare just now. He was lying perfectly still. Why his question? Saw game. I saw on the news doctors don't always perform surgeries. Sometimes it's the office managers or nurses aides. Why the f is this scene? Also, there's no way doctors are letting office managers perform surgeries, right? Right? We don't have time for this. Being self-aware doesn't absolve you of your sin. In fact, it gets you an extra one. <laughs> Gihun is having flashbacks that we won't be given context for until later, directly after a scene where there's exposition about the doctor helping some of the squid game workers that we also have no context for. And based on what happens to the doctor in this episode, I'm guessing we'll never have the context needed. All this is to say that this episode's almost 100% filler, which will get you about mm, 12,000 sin won. Also, this really feels like the show is trying to retcon this character mid-season. Let's not forget this man is a terrible son and a terrible father. This sequence is making me remember The Mist, and damn it, I don't like remembering The Mist. No! Main character finds out older character he looks up to is sick and or dying cliche. No, no, it's fine. I'm fine. I nearly pissed myself that night. This transition. 
It's my fault the zombie was missing a kidney? This single kidneyed individual gets the undercover agent disguised as number 29, thinking he's on the right path to find his brother because his brother only had one kidney as well. However, this isn't his brother that they're talking about. In fact, it's a female that, well, we'll see what happens to her shortly. Anyways, the convenience involved to have two people randomly selected for the squid with only one kidney, and then one of them is talked about right in front of the one person the story would affect the most is driving me to drink. Are you happy now, squid game? Granted, I'm only drinking lemonade, but do you know what all that sugar can do to a person's body? So what happened to that zombie? What do you think happened to it? Junho damn near blows his cover with this question as everyone in the room goes on to explain that the person he's pretending to be was there for the incident. The only reason he gets away with it is that the doctor, hangry and needing a nap, flips out. And on that I call bullshit. Transporting organs in Ziplocs. Pick up the pace. The boat's already here. Maybe he's right, but how exactly would he know that? They can't see the boat, and no one received a phone call or a text while they were waiting for the dock to be finished. His back survives this. Don't touch it. It's a bomb. They made this passage. So the VIPs could escape in an emergency. Since number 28 is assuming for the moment that this is the real number 29, then why would he feel the need to feed this exposition to him? The real number 29 would already know all of this. Now show me yours. Title of my sex tape? Let's get you washed up before anything else. <laughs> show haunts me to believe that seven people managed to silently enter this room in the time it took for this guy to turn around. I'm gonna spare you from having to listen to this man's description of events. All you need to know is that it starts with necro and ends with philia. And I get the vibe the show is going for, but yuck. Could we have done that to a guy? That's where you draw the line. Now I give the writers credit for adding layers to even the minor characters, but when you lead with corpse sex, homophobia comes across as a positive attribute. Like, we should be kinda happy he's not willing to f every corpse? Do you see the corner you've painted us into? Go check the list if you still don't trust me. I really want to move past this scene, but this just sounds like he's keeping a list of dead bodies he's not willing to necromance. Whether you sell the dead body's organs, or eat them, or whatever, I don't give a damn. Or whatever? Like, I don't really want the show to elaborate, but I do. But I don't. But I kind of do. These people suffered from inequality and discrimination out in the world. And we're giving them one last chance to fight fair and win. This insight that the front man isn't just a faceless administrator and might have motivations beyond money and mindless killing really adds depth to the story along with an interesting social justice question about fairness in modern society, and I think I like it. Now take a Sinwan off before I change my mind. This episode has so many people being in places where they don't belong that I'm starting to believe that no one actually works here. It's kind of like that episode of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt where we find out Cats isn't a real musical. This asshole just discards this mask on the ground like someone else is not going to have to pick it up. Not gonna show it, but it's the old bullet removal with a knife cliche. Choosing black walls for an interior room with no windows instead of something more light and airy. You know, to really open up the space. Jun Ho is in what looks like a very small document room by himself, but continues looking around with a flashlight instead of just turning on the lights. If there are cameras in here, this will definitely draw more attention to your activities. And odds are, if one of the henchmen at their arcade game workstation even noticed this, they'd probably just do the double tap video erasure move, because that's just what you do when you see a member of the Red Man group doing something they shouldn't. Three ring binders. Also, why write the labels on the binders in English when the rest of its contents are in Korean anyway? The writers have this shadow hide the picture of Junho's brother because despite the fact that most of the people in the show are wearing masks, it's necessary to keep teasing us with the idea that we might recognize who he is. Episode does not contain a squid game. I just woke up and I don't, don't revise. Don't tell me, your kidney's gone. Get yourself together and listen. I've got you, I won't let go. Hey you, you got a visa? I bet you don't. You're an illegal alien. Right, right. Somebody said alien. She thought they said illegal alien and signed up. Mr. Brains, you've been captain, right? Look at me. I'm the captain now. Which leads me to my second rule, the double tap. How do you expect me to operate with all of that struggling? Damn it, Scotty. It's a rectal examination, not an execution. It started glaring at me with one of its eyes popping out. I saw it in my dream last night. He was surprised. I thought that body was my dead brother. It's okay, but that spleen was a spitting image. Whether you sell the dead body's organs, or eat them, or whatever, I don't give a damn. Don't you dare talk about pineapple on my pizza. Ever. You have failed me for the last time. Hey, my God! 